Hey everyone, Alyssa here from Sipkins Nurseries and I'm here at my home and if any of you are like me, your fall planters are starting to look a little bit tired and it's time to refresh them. So today I'm going to create a winter greens planter and I'm going to show you how. So starting from the base here, we like to use at Sipkins a, a mulch mixture so it's a little bit heavier than soil. We find that it absorbs the moisture better which obviously keeps your greens fresh longer and it's also a little bit of um, a denser mixture so it allows the greens to stand up and stay in one position in it. So I like to always start with um, birch branches. Um, birch to me are essential in your winter planters. Uh, these specific ones I've had now for about six years and I can reuse them year after year. Um, I love them also because you can use them for different seasons. So spring, summer, fall, um, imagine the, the birch with um, lush gorgeous house plants uh, in the summer with some big concolius um, and, some, and some spilling petunias. Or in the fall the rustic um, coloring would tie in perfectly into your fall arrangements also. Now when I put my birch in, I just kind of push it down nice and firm. You want to get it fairly close to the bottom of the planter. And my specific pieces are fairly narrow, which allows me to just kind of push them in. If your birch were thicker, or if they were a little bit taller, then I would suggest putting your birch in first and then filling your mulch mixture in afterwards. I like to offset my birch. I just find that it gives a nicer look that way. Now you, today you can tell it's a beautiful uh, November day and I like to do my planters early in November um, because then my soil mixture is not frozen solid, it's a whole lot easier to work with and my fingers don't freeze. Now what you may be wondering is does that mean that your greens are going to last that long? Um, so if your temperature is above zero degrees we suggest just to water your greens every day or every other day until they freeze solid in the pot. Once they're frozen solid in the pot, they're going to last all the way up until March and give you months of enjoyment. Um, so before we begin, you're going to need a few supplies. Um, I always recommend to invest in a really good pair of pruners. It's going to serve you well throughout the year. Um, also a really good pair of um, wire snippers and that will be good for your embellishments and things that you're adding in after that have wires. As well, you may need some tape just to elongate some of your pieces if you need a little bit more height, which we'll show you later. We're going to start our winter greenery arrangement off with something called BC Cedar. So this is from out west. Uh, really beautiful. Smells incredible, of course. And you get a really nice um, two-tone color of the underside and also the top of the greenery. So you're going to put that into the planter the way it drapes. You're going to keep that same habit and you're going to use that as a skirting around the bottom of your pot, um, also known as a spiller. I always suggest when doing your greenery, always give it a fresh snip. That will help it to absorb the moisture better and last longer. Now you'll notice in my planter that I did a skirting about three quarters of the way around but I left the back empty and that's because this specific planter is going up against uh, my house so I don't need it to be seen from all directions. So after the spiller and the skirting is complete here, we're going to move on to this variety of greenery. Um, this is gorgeous, it's really nice long pieces, you have a little bit of that draping habit still which we're going to put some items um, around the skirting here but you also have some nice height and we're going to use some of those pieces to give us a little bit um, of height and balance here um, in the back. I always recommend to use a variety of mixed greens. I just find that it adds um, a lot more interest to your planter and uh, helps to make it look fuller and give you those different textures. Oops. 
So now that we have our pine um, kind of mixed throughout here, and we have some great height also, um, this one here, I probably used about half a package of the princess pine and about one full bundle of the BC cedar. So this is a 14 inch pot. And that gives you a little bit of an idea of how much you're going to need. Um, so depending on your size pot, you would need a little bit more or a little bit less. So now that we have our um, spillers completed, we're going to move on to our fillers. So fillers, my favorite is this one right here. So this is called the black cedar or Ontario cedar. Really great, a lot more stiff, upright branching and really nice and full. And this is excellent for filling in your center area here. So now that we have the spillers in here, I'm gonna move on to um, the back to give it a little bit of a backdrop here. So um, I'm blessed with some really beautiful, large, mature evergreens in my yard. And this is spruce. Now we also have this at Sipkins. And this is really beautiful. We're using as a large piece in the backdrop um, just to give you some great height and to fill it up also nice and full. Now along with using a nice tall piece in the back, I like to also use a little bit more throughout just to give it a uniformity and to add some more texture into the design. So now that we've got it nice and full and a great um, base for our design, we're gonna move on to the thrillers. So thrillers in our greenery are things like your magnolia. Now I love this soft velvety copper color and then you have this glossy green other side. Add some beautiful interest into your planter as well as this orgonia or variegated boxwood. I find it really helps brighten up the darker greens in the planter. So here you have it here with our thrillers, all filled in, making this look really nice and full. Now the last thing that I wanna add is some U. Now the U here, it's really pretty. It has an even darker green texture. You get some really nice tall pieces. And many of the pieces here also have these beautiful red berries on them. I've used about a full bundle of the magnolia and about half a bundle of the oregonia and just a few tall sprigs of the yew. So here you have it, a beautiful full natural greens planter, perfect as is or would look adorable if you added some little strands of lights throughout it, would be really pretty walking up to a house. But this specific planter, um, I'm going to add some embellishments to it and I'm going to show you how. So I love to start my arrangements with my showstopper piece. So I picked out this really cute natural mousse. And I'm just gonna tuck him front and center to where I want him. And that gives me a base for where all my other embellishments are gonna be. And then I'll wire him to the birch a little bit later. Next, I'm going to add some berries in. These are berries that I've had for years here from Sipkins, but I also love to add some new and fresh pieces each year into my inserts. You'll notice that some of these pieces are a little bit shorter and that's where the tape comes in. So using just a little bit of tape, my berries, I'm just gonna grab a little stem from my winter greens, line it up beside it, and using my tape, it's a really great way to elongate the stem and give me some more height in my planter. So 
you'll notice here that when I've added my embellishments to the planter, I've put them in throughout the insert and even towards the back. So it's important to um, spread them out throughout the planter instead of just putting them in the front. It gives more of a 3D natural look instead of just creating just a line in the front here. So now I've got these really cute balls on a stem, which makes them super handy for putting inside of my planter. And I'm going to use those to add a pop of traditional red color into my planter. So almost there, but not quite. I love to add some natural pine cones in also. Now the planter needs a little bit of uh, just something in the front here. So I've got this beautiful checkered buffalo plaid ribbon from Sipkins and I'm going to make a bow out of that. So I have about maybe about eight feet cut and just going to grab just a regular floral wire and just kind of uh, gathering what I would like for a tail for my bow. I'm going to start. So full loop up, full twist, full loop down, full twist. Using the floral wire, I'm just going to feed it through your fingers here, around the center, give it a really tight twist. And again, I'm just going to grab a stem, wrap my wire tightly around it. This is going to ensure it doesn't blow away, these country winter winds. A beautiful full winter greens arrangement ready to dress up my home and look fantastic for the winter season so we hope that we've inspired you to create your own winter green arrangement at home thanks so much for watching and we'll see you soon